Hi there. In this video, we will learn about the software that will help us to do linear programming, integer programming, quadratic programming, and non-linear programming as well. We will focus only on linear programming and integer programming in this video. And we will resort to the two examples that we have done before regarding the glassware profit maximization and employment cost minimization. These two videos are already there that you can refer to. And in this video, we will try to solve these two problems with the help of the software which is known as Lingo. Uh, before we go ahead, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and clicking the bell icon will enable you to receive the latest information regarding the quantitative economics and such softwares that can be very useful. So Lingo is a modeling uh, program in which we do uh, uh, make the models by using some programming tools and it is uh, has a wide applicability in fields like mathematics physics, uh, automatic control, financing, and also the most important thing uh, that is economics because here we are going to take two examples from the economic situations. Uh, talking about its functionality, it can help us to solve problems relating to linear programming, integer programming. These are the two that we will do in this uh, tutorial and we can also do quadratic programming or non-linear programming or non-linear optimization. So it's a very comprehensive software, however, this uh, video has a certain scope of it, which is highlighted here. So it has its own modeling language that we will see uh, right in a few uh, moments. And uh, our focus is on linear programming for economics or at most integer programming. So if we talk about the interface of the software, it has a command window where we can write the command of the code. It also has a solution report window in which the uh, result is displayed and it has a solver status dialog box in which we get the summary of the results. So let's focus on the operators or keywords that are used in its language. They are very simple. The first one is the comments operator which is the sign of exclamation. Here we can see in this box the sign of exclamation. This is used to mention the comments which are not the executable commands that are only for the reference. So they can be used to describe what we are trying to do. For example, if I'm going to write an objective function, I can mention that it is an objective function and the software will treat it as, an, as a comment and will not execute it. And then we have a command closure uh, operator or semicolon. Here you can see this is a semicolon. And in a, at the end of every command, you can see that there is a semicolon. It shows that um, we are completing a command or a comment. It is just like a full stop in English language. Then we have a uh, function operator where, uh, and it is used with the uh, at the rate uh, of, uh, symbol that is this uh, symbol and uh, it is highlighted in blue color because whenever you write a function it turns uh, into blue color as you can see here. Uh, the green uh, color shows that the comments will appear in a green color as you can see. Then we have a greater than an equal to operator which is very simple to understand and then there is a less than and equal to operator which again is very simple both of the symbols are there and the arithmetic operators will also be used just like they are used in Microsoft Excel or any uh, simple uh, computer expression of arithmetics. Now referring to the first example it was relating to the class we are making uh, when we were trying to maximize the profit and um, this is how we will write its command. The first command is actually the comment which tells us that it is an objective function. Prior to it, we have to write this sign of exclamation and um, at the end, we will write the semicolon which shows that this comment has been completed. Then we have to write the command. The first command was the objective function. So uh, maximization is our purpose. So we write max is equal to 150 into x plus 100 into y. Semicolon to complete the command. Then the comment that we are going to write the time constraint for glass blowing and then the glass blowing constraint is mentioned. And then the comment that we are going to write the ending time constraint and then the constraint itself. Then the third constraint, its description in the comment that is silica sand amount constraint. And this is the constraint itself. Then there are two other comments as well. That is uh, the Powell non-negativity constraint. That is this constraint which is showing that the x variable that is the bowel, the number of the bowels, it is equal to zero or if it is positive, not negative. And the plates non-negativity constraint is also mentioned here. 
you see this was a simple uh, program that we have to write for this uh, uh, economic example that we did before manually. The other one was the employment cost minimization problem and in that we actually did a little different thing and that was integer programming uh, instead of simple linear programming. So you can see that this is the employment cost objective function. So objective function starts with the minimum is equal to the cost function that is the objective function. Then we have these constraints the way we have written constraints in the example above we are going to write the constraints and with every constraint I have written the comments so that it becomes easy to understand that what constraint are we talking about. These are the constraints in their comments. Finally this is the uh, thing that will help us to make it an integer programming instead of uh, uh, linear programming because uh, we know that full time worker cannot be hired in fraction. So what we want is that the answer in terms of x and y should not be any fraction, it should be an integer. So we write at the rate because at the rate shows that we are calling a function here and the keyword of the function is GIN which stands for general integer that is uh, an integer that can adopt any value between 0 and 9. If we write BIN, it means that it is a binary integer that is BIN. So uh, we know that the integer can be any value in addition to 0 and 1. So we can write general integer that is GIN. So X is GIN and Y is also GIN. That is full time and part time workers will be some whole number values, not any fraction. So these are the uh, simple two programs that we can use to execute the linear programming and integer programming in Lingo. Now let us come to the software and see how it can be executed. So here we are in the interface of Lingo as you can see its uh, logo and the um, copyright and the release date, uh, the company and the website and the um, license. It is a full version, a licensed version. So. Um, these are various options that we have, a file menu, a solver, and then uh, windows, and then help. Um, in the file menu, we can select any program that we have already written, or we can um, uh, write a new one. In the solver option, we can choose options that we want to see or avoid seeing. And in window, we will have two windows, broadly speaking, as I already told, that one is the command window, other is the status window. And in help topics, we have them. Now let us uh, open the uh, program that I have already written as you saw that I just opened it. Uh, I am not going to type it because I already explained it to you. We will save time here and you can see that it is the same um, program that I just showed you before. The objective function and you can see max is in blue color. It means that it is a function that we have called here. And then the comment for the first constraint, constraint the comment for the second constraint and so on. Now I should execute it. There are two ways of executing it. Um, I can click this button, which is a kind of arrow getting hit on the target. And as soon as I bring my uh, mouse cursor on it, it shows that it is a solve uh, function. So other option is that I can press Control U. It will give me the results. So I'm going to press Control U. And as I did it, uh, the solver status dialog box appeared or window appeared in which uh, this uh, program that I saved with its certain name was executed. Uh, model class it's linear programming and we have a global optimum and this is the global optimum that we were looking for the maximized profit and there were two variables x and y there were no non-linear variables and then we have six uh, equations in it and um, there are other pieces of information that might not be uh, much relevant to our work. We can close this because the output is here in this uh, solution report window and in the background we have this uh, model window in which we wrote the model. So uh, if I focus on this I can see the output. I can tell you a small hack that you can use. Uh, go into the window command and click tile and it will ask you if you want to tile these uh, windows horizontally or vertically. Let me go with the vertical and then you can see that it is very much uh, organized and readable. This was the program that we ran and this is the output. So this is the objective value with its maximum value and uh, two iterations happened which is the process of solution in this case and the time it took was 0.22 seconds and the model class is linear programming we did it that was that is the linear programming and these are the pieces of information that we just saw in that 
solver status dialog box or window. So coming to this thing which is new, this is the variable, uh, the first one x and y, these are the critical values that is uh, 25 of x and 20 of y will enable us to maximize the profits. This is uh, not relevant in this case, these are the two maximum um, uh, the critical values of x and y which will give us this maximum value that is 5750. This is related to first row, this is to second row, third and fifth and sixth row. Now if I see there are uh, six rows here, the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one and the sixth one. So this is the row of the objective function and it shows that this is the maximized value of the objective function. So uh, this is uh, the second row and uh, below this column of slack or surplus it is zero. It means that there is no slack. If I look at this function, it is less than or equal to 70. It means that uh, there can be a slack in it. That is, if it is being underutilized, because slack means the possibility of underutilization. So if there is no slack, it means that uh, fully utilizing full utilization is happening. That is 70 units. And uh, 50 is the uh, uh, value uh, in front of it. It tells us that if one unit increase happens in this constraint, that is the second row then 50 units increase will take place in the objective function. That is, it will become 5800, five, uh, five, that is 50 added, this 50 will be added. So let me do this experiment by changing this uh, 70 into 1, 71. So now it is 71 and if I execute it, there, will be, there should be an increase of 50 in the objective function, so it should become 5800. Zero, zero. I am going to press Ctrl S to save this change that is from 70 to 71. Ctrl U to run the command and I got the result. So you see that in the result I have now 5800 just like I thought it will happen that one unit increase in this constraint that is the second value, the second row, there should be an increase of 50 in the objective function. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to revert back to the original example. I have made it 70 again and I'm going to do Control S to save it, Control U to execute it. And now it is restored. I'm going to close uh, this old window and I'm going to use this window, which is a fresh window. I'm going to tile it as well, vertically. So now I have the same basic example again. Coming to the third row, it was about the annealing time and it was equal to or less than 130. So it is having this 10 in the column of slack or surplus. Since it is less than or equal, so there can be a slack only, not a surplus. Because surplus happens when there is a greater or equal to sign. So 10 is the slack. It means that there is underutilization of 10 units in this. That is 120 units are being used and not 130. When there is a slack, definitely uh, there uh, and uh, a unit increase in this constraint is not going to have any effect on the objective function because it is not at its highest level, that is it's already 120, that is 10 less than the maximum value 130. Talking about the fourth constraint, it is yet another constraint and there is no slack in it. So now again we can see that uh, if one unit increase happens in this constraint, it will increase the uh, objective function that is profit by 50 units. We can do this experiment as well. For instance, instead of 45, I'm going to write 46. Control S, Control U, and I got the result. So again, you saw that the value has now increased to 580, 5800. Again, as we can see, this was the expected change. So I'm going to revert it back to original, that is 45. Control Save, Control U, execute it. And I'm going to close the older one and I'm going to use the recent one. Then the fifth one, the fifth constraint is a non-negativity constraint. Since there is a greater to or equal to sign, it means that it's going to be a surplus. So uh, if, if this is non-zero and it is not zero, it means that uh, a surplus of 25 is there. It should be there because it is equal to zero and there's a possibility of 25 because this is the critical value of x. And for y, it is also equal to 20, that is non-zero. So this is equal to 20. So the surplus is there of uh, 25 and 20 for these two constraints. So uh, we 
have now overall understanding of this output and we have experimented with it as well. So in the blink of an eye, we have executed such complex uh, model uh, and it is very easy to understand. Now let us close this and come to the other example that we have and that is the employment cost uh, minimization. You can see it is the same function that we saw in the uh, word file and the new thing here is uh, this that is the general integer. For the timing, I'm going to make it a comment. So it's another hack that if you want to silence some command, you should put this exclamation sign before it and it will become green. It means that it will not be executed. So these commands will be executed. Let us execute it. Control S to save it. Control U to execute it. Now it is executed and you can see that this is the result. This is the minimized value of the cost and we can make it tiled. This time let me organize it in a horizontal way. So it will look like this. This is another way of doing it. And uh, you can see that uh, these are the results. These are various numbers showing the total number of variables or total number of equations. So X will be 19.28571 and Y will be this. And the results will be there and these can also be interpreted. But the problem that we face is that we cannot hire 19.2851 full-time workers. And we cannot hire 6.428 part-time workers. So this is why we have to resort to the integer programming for which I'm going to recall the uh, general integer function for x as well as for y so that full-time workers should be some non-fraction number as well as the part-time workers. Now I'm going to uh, save it, control s, execute it, control u. So the results are there now. This time I want to compare the results so I'm going to tile all three of these and uh, in this uh, this time it should be vertical so that they become readable. Uh, this was the command that we run. Uh, this was uh, the general integer thing. But now let us compare this thing, which is more significant. Let us rearrange it. Okay, so I have rearranged it. This was the uh, linear programming result in which the part-time and the full-time workers, they were appearing as fractions, which is not acceptable from the real life perspective. It is correct from the mathematical point of view. So this uh, general integer version is going to uh, help us uh, solve this problem. The cost is now this much. It is slightly higher than this one, that is 17,485. This is something undesirable, but at the same time, we have to consider this thing for which we did the integer programming. And you can see that uh, 20 and 5, these are being used instead of 19.28 and 6.42. Now we have a, a more meaningful result where we can hire 20 of the full-time workers and 5 of the part-time workers. I opened this solver status dialog box just to show that in this case the model class is not LP that is linear programming it is PILP which stands for pure integer linear programming. PILP pure integer linear programming. So this is how we have done the linear programming as well as pure integer linear programming with the examples that we manually did before. I hope you have learned from this tutorial. You may give it a thumbs up. Thank you.